Oh, how the time flies by. Do you know this is the third generation Kia Picanto? If you're not sure what the first generation looked like, it's because the car had sex appeal of an earthworm. Second generation looked more interesting and the third? It wouldn't look out of place in a posh neighborhood, would it? And if you want to pretend you're a racing driver, it has some racing stickers on it as well. This is the top-of-the-range GT Line model, which, besides sporty bits of trim here and there, is also very well specced. It gets things like automatic climate control, heated seats and steering wheel, or full leather upholstery as standard. In a small city car you want some minimum practicality and uh, Kia Picanto is quite practical actually. At 255 liters the boot is one liter bigger than in the Suzuki Celerio, which was the current leader. We've got two shopping bag hooks. We've got a mini spare, just in case you have a flat tire. The rear seat splits 60-40. Unfortunately, there is no flat loading area, but uh, a double floor is something we get only in a, uh, what is it, Volkswagen App, Skoda Citigo and Seat Mi. These are the only three in this segment where you probably get a flat loading area. By the way, Kia's boot is still around 4 liters bigger than that in a Volkswagen app. Two adults can travel in the back in relative comfort. There are no cup holders, AC vents or even a USB port, but at least it's easy to get in and out. Rear doors make a big difference in a small car like this. There is a lot more happening in the front, and I'm not just talking about red bits of trim. The instrument cluster and the infotainment system are clear and easy to read. There are cup holders, storage, even under this miniature armrest, large door bins. I know cars in higher segments, which are not half as practical, but cost a lot more. A small city car can either be dull, like the first generation Picanto or current generation Suzuki Celerio, or it can be stylish and cool. Sure, Picanto is not a modern interpretation of a retro model like, for example, Fiat 500, so it has to invent itself, make itself stand out on the road. GT Line Picanto with a 4-cylinder 1.2-liter 84 horsepower engine accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in a not so breathtaking 12 seconds. The automatic is even slower, and if you go for the 1 liter 3 banger, I doubt it'll even go that fast. But then I suspect nobody planned for a Kia Picanto to be a very fast car very often. Around the city, it's fast enough, and GT Line has disc brakes on all four wheels, so if you have to, it'll stop almost instantly. Visibility is good, moreover this car has rear parking sensors as standard, the GT line obviously. There is also an optional backup camera, so that's pretty good. City jungle is its natural habitat. That said, 16-inch alloys make the ride a bit too harsh for my liking. Buying a car, we sometimes wonder if it's good for more than what's advertised. Sure, jack of all trades, master of none and all that, but I sometimes like to test the boundaries of comfort. You know, for science. I took the Picanto for about a 500 km road trip to pick up an aunt from her vacation. There were some dual carriageways as well as back country roads. Above 100 km per hour, Picanto is clearly out of its depth, though eventually it will reach motorway speeds and then it's surprisingly stable in a straight line. However, going up a hill you'll have to drop a gear or two and in the corners it does not inspire confidence, despite GT in its name. Don't worry, I tested all this before actually picking up the Ant. By the way, Kia Picanto with standard safety equipment scored 3 stars in Euro NCAP tests. It gets 4 stars with an optional 590 Euro advanced driving assistance pack, which includes autonomous emergency braking in and outside the city. Outside the city I wouldn't mind a 6th gear and a turbo. In a Fiat 500 Twinner I drove in relative comfort from Poland to Austria and back. In case of the Picanto, I'd probably take a train. I mean, the seats are not bad, but in a Fiat 500, 
they were more comfortable. When pottering along behind a lorry, because you're not going to be doing much overtaking, fuel consumption drops to around 5 liters per 100 kilometers. On a dual carriageway it goes up to around 7, combined I got about 6. So with a 35 liter tank your range is around 5-600 kilometers. Should you be low on petrol, Satnav will lead you to the nearest gas station. Satnav is an option, but it comes with 7 years of free updates. Now, I can't speak for the rest of Europe, but in Poland, the Satnav not only did not recognize a 2-year-old ring road, but also tried to lead me up a no-left turn sign. For 990 euros, you can buy a top-notch smartphone with Google Maps these days. Kia Picanto prices start just below 10,000 euro. GT Line model with manual transmission costs around 15 grand. Add about 1500 for some options. I'd rather go a trim level down and with all the options still pay less than 15,000. Kia Picanto has a practically laid out cockpit and the boot is large for this segment of a car and the whole car actually looks quite good. However, top spec model is not as comfortable as I'd expect from a city car. And do you like small city cars or maybe you'd rather spend a bit more and get an all-rounder? What would it be? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. New episodes every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.